running bill. I was hoping that you were going to have a recommendation. I was supposed to just be here. <laughs> um, all the other counties around here pretty well don't charge farmers. They have anything. So I think I, that's my proposal, but I have, you know, I'll get together with the board and ask them if that's what you want. What are you going to think? Your proposal, the ones you're going to from farmers to pay your return. They're going to have to pay return. Um, I, I guess what I want to, and, I, and I'll, because Earl's here, I'll also ask him the question, but there, there is a cost to to this application fee, which the, the zoning sees as, as a necessary and, and required type situation. Um, in the construction of the planning and zoning document that we have, um, we sat in on part of those meetings and, and the discussion to whether there should be a fee for, for the construction permit. And the consensus of that group at that time was uh, that if you charge one group, you should uh, charge all groups or you shouldn't charge anyone. Well, the, the initial recommendation was that we would, we would make that fee apply to everyone. Uh, there's been a group come forward to to challenge the idea that the ag couldn't be charged and that that would then be uh, interpreted as a regulation to ag. Um, when, when we still uh, we still need to have the application to be looked at and determined as to whether it might be uh, exempt or not exempt. So, so there is a cost to the county to, to look at those. And so I guess for me then the question comes back, do we not charge anyone for the application fee and we um, use the real basic levy to fund at whatever level it takes to, to do the, the cost of business? Or do we continue to apply a fee to those that are not exempt and then take the balance of the of the cost of operation from from rural base. Uh, I, I guess I would I would ask you Earl um, what what's your opinion? Well that, that's purely a political decision. The, the state statute and your zoning ordinance both prohibit you from charging rag buildings for a fee for the building. You can, you can require a permit, but you cannot charge a fee for them. And they need to do some kind of application, which uh, I'm giving you a memo stating that. In order to show that they're entitled to an exemption, <coughs> but I, uh, I think most of the surrounding ones are still are charging a fee and barely doing an exemption for the ag building. In other words, they probably require an upfront fee and give them feedback. Or some of them indicated they do that. Uh, you know, what, why would why would they do that? What? Well, uh, it, I suppose it's because that way those that are not entitled to the exempt exemption, you don't have to go out and collect it after the fact. You have it submitted with the application. My, uh, Carroll County's indicates that they, that's what they do is they refund the fee. Carroll County does? Yeah, I you'll, if you'll read their uh, application, it indicates that there's a refund. Does these apply to non-farm building permits only? Right. It says they apply, but they must make a determination that there's an exemption and a refund process. I'm pretty sure Carroll County does that. But if, if you require the fee up front and then you find there's an exemption and you're refunded immediately. Or, or you can just require them to submit the application and then <coughs> got to pay the fee before they actually receive information. Okay. But that's simply a decision. But it's a decision there. Uh, what, what about the, you know, so 
the, there had been some discussion here that, that okay, Carroll County down here in that last paragraph says non-refundable need to be forfeited if there's so it appeared to me that there's a fee and then but like I said that, that's just the way I'm reading their application now, what, what about uh, the, the the document before we had talked about any fee at all had discussed the the repercussions of, of, of not getting your permit and, and that there would be a fine. Uh, how should that be handled then? If you're, we're still asking and, and demanding that, that there needs to be an application so we're aware of the construction that 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 penalty should still apply. <coughs> okay. On our application, I'm suggesting that we added, we add uh, something to the fact, although it, it does appear that the one Sherry used does have it also, Carroll Counties didn't, that there would need to be an inspection if sewer were going to be on, you know, sanitary, human sanitary facilities were going to be on the premises. As long as we've got that and they're notified that they need to do that, then they're, if, if they're building them, we, we've got grounds under that statute. What, now, what about that other any kind of construction, you could say grain bin, machine shed that don't require sanitary? We would have to have that in something other than the zoning ordinance. In other words, uh, you, you, you need to slip that in some other ordinances to requirements for permits. <laughs> Uh, in fact, that could be a standalone ordinance, a building permit is required for any construction anywhere in the county. It just can't be in the zoning ordinance. What, why would that be looked at any different, whether we're in the zoning category because, or... Because the zoning ordinance prohibits it. In the code? In the code okay. and in the zoning ordinance. And the reason the zoning ordinance prohibits it is because it's in the code. <laughs> But you can step out and do it in a, in a different can, situation? You can step out and do things under different codes, but they have to be under a different code section. For, for me, the question comes down to, do you, do you look at the, the cost of doing the operation and, and fund it in a real basic? It, it's, it's, minimal, it's minimal cost and, and not charge anyone for their construction permits or do you charge those who are not doing something that's categorized exempt? Like windmills, for example. Yeah. Or, or say somebody wants to build a factory out here yeah. at the intersection of New 20 and 196. I like that. To me that's, you know, the cleanest way to do it is you know, not charging people. For anything over egg, charge the ones for non egg, and how do we fund it? Fund it out real basic. And it's a good place to charge them because the you know the people that are the people that are putting up buildings in the county are doing a lot of the labor in favor, just lowering their tax. So like my father in law has always said, you know, we're getting penalized, we're making improvements for the county and for economic development through the equalization. The absentee landowner in California owns a thousand bare acres. Just every time I build a building, it helps him out. So, so we kind of do our own equalization. The bare landowner is going to get a little bit of expense through real estate. And so, so if I'm understanding you right, then you're, you're saying those, those buildings that are non-exempt still should pay an application fee, and those that are exempt, we whatever the cost of doing business for yeah. the planning and zoning operation is would be the additional